Okay, RTDs, um, looking at uh, the basic operation, RTD, of course, is resistance temperature detector. And what they are, they're nothing more than just a resistor made with usually platinum wire. Um, nickel and copper are used in some cases, and there's a few other metals that are also used, but platinum is by far the most common because of its, it has a very predictable relationship between its resistance and the temperature. And it's very predictable, very consistent, and it's going to repeat that resistance reading over time a lot better than some of the other metals. Plus, it has a really wide temperature range of usability. And getting kind of down to the, the nuts and bolts of this and the basic operation, uh, what Burns has actually done is they've taken this resistor and really perfected it for accuracies. And really, all we're talking about is a spring but done to perfection through burns. But the spring carries a certain voltage or becomes a resistor. And so that resistance is directly proportional to a temperature. And the resistance changes, the temperature changes, and vice versa. So performance is defined by resistance versus temperature and its repeatability. And that's where burns comes in. They make a fantastic RTD for repeatability. The uh, performance of those um, of RTDs, they're, they're covered by a couple different standards. One is that ASTM E1137, and then there's also an international standard. Uh, and it, you may have see it referred to still as a DIN standard. Um, that's been replaced by this IEC, or actually EN60751 standard. But they go in and, and define that resistance versus temperature relationship and um, actually define the, the accuracy of that device at particular temperatures. Now when we get into the actual relationship of the resistance and temperature, the temperature coefficient, which is the amount that the resistance changes per degree of temperature change. And it, it can be calculated quite easily by taking the resistance of that sensor at zero degrees C and then also measuring it at 100 C and just run it through that little equation and you'll get a number and the most common one right now is per the IEC 607051 standard it's 0 .00385 and the units on that are ohms per ohm per degree C so it's just the average change in resistance per degree of temperature change between zero and 100 degrees C and that's how the temperature coefficient is defined. And here we have some of our more common coefficients. Uh, Bill, you could probably help define this a little bit better, but it is from what I see on my end, the point zero zero three eight five is pretty much the norm outside right. of the laboratory, of course. But uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, it, it really is. It's the one that's used uh, probably in, you know, 98% of the applications. The, the one on the bottom, the 003925, is the coefficient of pure platinum wire. And it's typically used in secondary temperature standards and also primary standards, uh, which are used to calibrate other standards. Um, the one thing that, uh, and I know, Harold, you've run into this, you have to match the temperature coefficient to your instrument that's reading it. Otherwise, you can end up some big problems. Absolutely. We have a screen coming right up, a slide on this. And, you know, that comes in real handy. Uh, if you have the wrong temperature coefficient in your controller that's different than the actual RTD, you are going to be off. And this screen will show you here. Just It's, it's a few degrees, but the whole idea behind this is you're trying to strive for accuracy. And by not having this continuation, you're going to lose that accuracy. And actually, it's very similar to a thermocouple. If you have a thermocouple that's a type J, but you're running a type K a wire, then you're not going to you lose your accuracy. And I think that's what we're trying to achieve here, is choosing the right unit, choosing the right sensor, getting it accurate all the way through. Right. 
And if you're trying to heat a process to 100 degrees C and your sensor is saying that it's 1.7 mole, you're going to be wasting a lot of energy trying to get it up to what it says is supposed to be 100 degrees C, and you're actually going to be over temp. And that's the, what we're here for, is we're trying to save you money, and we're trying to make you money. And it's all done with accuracy, perfection. Here we can see a couple of different styles of RTD sensing elements. And now these are the, the little resistors themselves. The, the one that you see at the top of the screen that has the ceramic mandrel and the little, looks like a little spring strung inside, that's actually the, the platinum sensing element right inside there. Right, yep, right where we're pointing now. And right below that, the little blue thing with the two leads, that's actually a thin film sensor. And those are manufactured by taking a small chip of alumina or some other ceramic, and you deposit a real thin film of platinum on it, and then they trim it with a laser to get 100 ohms, and then they attach the lead wires to it. And just to give you an idea of the size of these things, the there, I just show a little push pin point in the, in the photo there. The wire itself for the, the wire wound sensor is actually 7 ten thousandths inch in diameter. And so you can see that the, the thin film sensing element is, you know, it might be like a sixteenth of an inch square. So they're very, they can be made very small. And that spring, that's the one that we measure the resistance across. And it becomes uh, so accurate if it's built properly. Right. And either one of these can be done in either a single sensing element or a dual, where you would have, actually the, the photo on top shows a dual element where you have those four coils. There's two coils for each sensing element. And you'd want to do that, for example, if you had a, a local indicator, and then maybe you'd want to hook the other sensing element to a controller, but have, that, the, have the measurement done right at the same location. having a minor difficulty here. Bear with me. Uh -oh. There we go. There we go. Minor glitch. This, uh, guys, if you have that chance to download, here's another one you want to download. It shows you the difference in temperature range between the thin film and the wire wound. And the, you know, the thin film is going to be less expensive, but as you can see, it's going to uh, cover a less range. The advantage to the thin film, it's probably more durable. It takes vibration better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's if, it, if it's packaged correctly, it can be extremely durable. And uh, we got the wire wound. It shows 932, but sometimes you read of RTDs going higher than that, Bill. Well, you know, they do have that capability, especially in the, like, the temperature standards. They can, they can go up, you know, well past 1,000 degrees, and... For most industrial applications where you need high durability, the RTD, you know, the, the most reasonable temperature range is that minus 196 to 500 C range. If you get much over that, you need to do some special things to prevent the platinum from becoming contaminated and causing drift and some other performance uh, problems. So ideally, we would stay within these ranges if you want to use an RTD. Right. And if you get over that 500C or 932F, you probably want to look at a thermocouple as being a better choice.